All right, we are off to Texas and we have three missions in mind. One, we've got to get the Remington Model 7 zeroed for our winner of our big giveaway, Tori Ortega, and get it ready for some deer slaying. Two, we've got hogs to put down. And three, we're going after turkeys. We are here in Texas, which is one of our favorite ranges. We did bring the Model 7 from Remington, 6.5 Creedmoor. We've got the Zeiss Conquest V4 on it, 4 to 16. This thing is gonna be a deer slaying machine, I promise. So we're gonna try sighting it in here, or not try, we are gonna sight it in here in just a minute and uh, see what kind of grouping we can get out of it. But when you come to Texas, you can't come here without hog hunting. So I brought something a little different. We brought a Marlin Dark. Also with the Zeiss, but this is the uh, Conquest V6, just a one to six. And we got a little extra surprise on top with a Silencer Co. Hybrid on it. We do not have this one zeroed yet. We've not shot it with the suppressor. So we're gonna give it a run and uh, see what happens. Should be good times. Hogs and turkeys need to beware. All right, yes, I'm holding a 4570. Yes, I said that hogs and turkeys beware. No, I am not hunting turkeys with a 4570. We also brought some uh, Remington shotguns. That's what we're actually turkey hunting with. I just didn't have one in my hand at the time. Just wanted to make that clear. All right, so we've got the 4570, the Marlin Dark zeroed. And I gotta tell you, this thing is a shooter. I was shocked. I'm not a lever gun guy. Well, I wasn't a lever gun guy. I am now. I absolutely love shooting this thing. You just flat out feel like a badass carrying it. And I was not expecting it to be a tack driver. And it is. I mean, I was absolutely stacking bullets, one right on top of the other at 100 yards, at 200 yards. It, easily held an MOA uh, at 100 and 200, and we actually shot it out to 500. I wouldn't shoot at an animal that far, but on the range, it was a lot of fun to shoot. So anyway, up next, myself, Steve Arian, who is our director of training for our long range schools, longtime buddy of mine, and my son, Eddie, and Jay, who works for the T-Diamond Ranch, all of us went out uh, looking for hogs. It didn't take us too long to find them in this big giant wheat field and it was the exact scenario that we were looking for. The sun was going down, we had the wind in our face, and we had a group of, I don't know, probably 12 to 15 hogs. So we started making our sneak up on them. Steve is carrying a 6.5 Grindel, which is an AR. That's his hog slaying machine. I'm carrying the 4570, and this is my first hunt ever with a lever gun. We start sneaking up on them. We get within 120 yards. Here's what happens. All right, so I've got to make sure one thing just a little bit clear because as you're watching this video, I set up on my bog tripod and I've got one of the hogs in my crosshairs and I squeeze off, but you see a hog run off to the left. There were actually two hogs 
uh, stacked one kind of behind the other. And just as I squeezed the trigger, squeezed, squeezed, just as I squeezed the trigger, one of the hogs took off and I hit the one on one shoulder and it exited all the way through the other shoulder. Now, when we're hunting hogs, we tell our clients do not aim for the shoulder because they've got that big protective shield on there. And even with the 300 wind mag, I've seen hogs take off before. It didn't take off with the 4570. We double penetrated, went all the way through to the other uh, shoulder, dropped it right where it stood. That is awesome, man. That is actually my very first animal with a lever gun. Remington was nice enough, or Marlin was nice enough to send us this dart to use. And uh, man, I got the job done. Perfect size pig too for, uh, for getting cleaned up and uh, putting on the grill. Nice job, Good work, you. brother. Yeah. All right, I got my hog down. Steve got two down, I believe, and they were all the perfect size for throwing on the smoker. Now it's time to go after some turkeys. It took us a little while to get on them, but we finally did. We found a couple. They were Jake's, which I could care less about the beard or at this point anyway, because I want to put some meat in the freezer. I already had a recipe that I knew that I wanted to use to put open from fillthetable.com. We got them to come in, put the beat on them, got the flop, end of story. We got the flop. Well, turkey season has not been easy this year. Not for me anyway. But we finally got something to throw on the smoker. I already got a recipe in mind, know what I want to do. Good job. So in between hunts, we've got about 30,000 acres to explore. And Roy told us that there's some caves and some caverns on this place. And he said they're loaded with bats. I was pretty intrigued. So Eddie, Steve, and I had to go check them out. How many do you think, sir? Eddie, 10,000? At least. That ain't even a fraction of what's in here. Hey, what do you think about that? <laughs> I was violated <laughs> by that. Damn it. <laughs> Show the camera. <laughs> we gotta fall every time. Wow. All right, we've got hogs down, we've got a turkey down, and for whatever reason, the camera guy thinks that he needs to be able to hunt. And actually he does, it's my son, Eddie, and so we always try to hunt together as much as we can. He runs the camera much better than I do. Actually, I don't even know how to run the camera, so he gets to do all the camera work for us. But yeah, it's his turn to hunt. And we go out with our longtime friend, also our outfitter, Roy Wilson. And right off the bat in the morning, we come across a wheat field with a giant boar in it. He's all by himself. Whenever we pull into the field, he's about 600 yards away. We start sneaking in. We get within 120, 150 yards and through the Tacticam that we've got on our Remington 6.5 Creedmoor, 
you can see what Eddie sees, and yeah, he's my son, but this is one of the best shots that I've seen in a long time. He's shooting off shooting sticks, which is not exactly stable. We've got some tips and tricks and techniques that we teach when using shooting sticks, and a lot of the other things that we teach in the class really come into play. You gotta make sure that you get that trigger squeeze right, and that you've got it shoulder right, and you've got a good cheek weld. So there's a lot of things that you have to think about to pull off the type of shot that we wanna do on hogs, which on this one we call it the Abraham Lincoln shot, right behind the ear. Through this tactic cam, you can see that's exactly what he does. Got her done. Yeah, so what a great time in Texas we had. Got to spend some time with uh, Eddie, my good buddy Steve, and back to a place that's really just like our second home uh, with Roy Wilson on the T-Diamond Ranch. Eddie actually got his uh, first big game ever when he was a whole lot shorter, and actually he was a whole lot cuter back then too. Uh, but he was seven years old. He got three pigs with a single shot, uh, 243, three different shots, but he had to reload and anyway, he got, he got, three, got three pigs. And now after all these years, 13 years later, I uh, had the opportunity to hunt with Roy again. We're down there a lot, get to see Roy and Becky a lot, but it's usually business because we send our clients there and we do our long range schools at his facility as well, uh, which is now on uh, Guitar Ranches. So anyway, we're just, we're just doing what we do. Um, got them uh, field dressed, we got them butchered just the other day, and um, now we're getting ready to do some processing. We're we'll actually gonna make some uh, sausage, we'll do a little bit of blending uh, with some bacon, we've got some spices, we'll make some regular uh, breakfast sausage, and we've also got some maple. We'll use that uh, regular breakfast sausage, uh, but we'll mix that with maybe some moose meat, maybe with some uh, ground elk. We'll make some great burgers, add a little bit of fat to it. And uh, to be honest with you, as far as the processing like this, this is still relatively new for us. As long as we've been hunting, we, we started the field to table just a year ago. And uh, so I've only made a few batches of this, but we've had great teachers in uh, Chef Wutch uh, who's just been instrumental in helping us get this from field to table going. So anyway, we're just going to uh, start doing some grinding with, um, uh, with some of the pork that we, uh, we packaged actually just last weekend. We do have just some regular bacon. Uh, most of you probably know uh, wild pork is way leaner than what you'll get from, uh, from a, a pig farm. And so you have to add a little bit of bacon to it and then we'll start adding, adding our spices. So. Uh, anyway, this, for us, this is what Field the Table is all about, man, is spend some time with family, friends. We got Jack Hyden back behind the camera over there. He's a big time hunter too. He came over to help us uh, mix up a little sausage. So uh, anyway, this is what we love to do. Hope you guys enjoy it. So this is actually uh, pretty simple. We're literally just following the directions. This is just our regular uh, regular seasoning for regular breakfast sausage. And uh, we're literally just following the directions. So I've got pre-measured in here. We've got uh, 10 pounds total of, uh, of ground meat here. Now we used uh, seven pounds of, uh, or seven and a half pounds of, of the wild pork and uh, two and a half pounds of uh, of just regular bacon. So we've got four and a half ounces of the, of the seasoning that we're gonna mix in. Normally we would use our mixer, but I left it down in Texas. Uh, so we'll, we'll end up doing this by hand.
All right, so we got this mixed up, and we actually brought a hot plate out here or a little butane burner. And you can't uh, you can't package it up without trying it. So we're gonna make a couple little patties out here in the garage. See how it tastes. If we need to add some more seasoning, and uh, see how this turns out. And then we'll get this batch actually just packaged up. Cheers. See how this turns out. Tastes like sausage. Tastes pretty dang good to me. <laughs> I love it. That's good. Nice. So the last part to do is just package it up. We've got uh, our, our chamber back here and uh, we're gonna do it in, in one pound packages. It's just me and Mrs. right here. So, um, you know, I'll thaw it out and we'll use some for breakfast. And then like I said earlier, man, we'll mix it in with some ground elk, some ground moose, add some fat and some additional flavor uh, to our burgers and call it good. So we're just getting it ready for the freezer. One down. What we love so much about the T-Diamond Ranch and going down there is that there's so much to do. It's such a diverse place. We've got multiple ranges to go shoot our guns on. Obviously the hunting is just a given. Hogs, turkeys, deer, quail, waterfowl. There's a little bit of everything there. Plus exploring, checking out the caves was a bonus for us. And my favorite part is I just get to spend some time with friends and family and we get to put together a true from field to table experience. If you guys would like to check something else out like this, go to our website from fieldtotable.com or go to our YouTube channel, which is Outdoor Solutions Hunting. Hit the, subs sub 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 hit the subscribe button. That shouldn't be so hard to say. Hit the subscribe button. Give us a like, leave us a comment, let us know what else you would like to see, and we will do our best to put it together for you. Thanks for checking us out, guys. We appreciate it.